an introduction to red black trees. A red black tree is a kind of self-balancing binary search tree. Each node of the binary tree has an extra bit, and that bit is often interpreted as the color, red or black, of the node. These color bits are used to ensure the tree remains approximately balanced during insertions and deletions. Here is a time complexity comparison of binary search trees, BST, and red black trees, RBT. We are comparing search, insert, and delete only because these are the major operational differences between the trees. We are going to compare the average cases and the worst cases. The average case for binary search trees for search, insert, and delete are all O log of N and O N in the worst case. The average and worst case for red black trees are both O log N. Invariance 1. A node is either red or black. 2. The root is black. 3. There cannot be two red nodes in a row. And 4. Any unsuccessful root nil pass contain the same number of black nodes. This is called the black height of the red black tree. Which operations can be efficiently supported by a red black tree? How efficiently? Insert, delete, and search. Average and worst case, O log N. How do red black trees rebalance? by rotations and recoloring, and here is an example. Rebalancing is achieved by a series of rotations and recoloring of nodes to ensure that the invariant rules are not broken after the operation is complete. Searching for an element in the tree is easy. It works exactly the same way as a binary tree. Insertion, however, is more difficult. We are going to show you how to rebalance a tree after you insert an element. Here is our initial red black tree that satisfies all of the invariants or properties. There are not two reds in a row. All paths from the root to the leaves passes through the same number of black nodes. All leaves are black and of course all nodes are colored only red or black. We said previously that all leaves nils are black. In actuality there are pointers from all leaves, red or black, that point to a null value that is considered black. For simplicity's sake we omit these nulls. Now, suppose we want to insert a node with value 14. This is relatively easy. We just find its proper place in the tree and insert it as a red node, which does not violate any of our invariants. Now suppose we want to insert a node with value 15. Finding its correct place in the tree, we insert 15 as the right child of 14, and it must, and it must be red to not violate our property that all paths from the root to the nulls must contain the same number of black nodes. This, however, does violate our other property of the tree that says all children of red nodes must be black. To solve this issue, we begin our process of node rotations and recoloring. We make 14 the parent of 13 and 15, recoloring 15 to black and leaving 14 red, and we call this a left rotation of three nodes. Now, there is a conflict with 14 and 16, so we have to perform a right rotation, making 14 the parent of 13 and 16, and reassigning 15 to be a left child of 16. Since our coloring rule is still violated, 
We now rotate 14 up one more level, making it the root with 10 and 16 as its children, and we recolor 16 to black. Most red-black tree implementations have the rule that the root must be black. Since coloring 14 to black would add one black node to all paths from the root to the null pointers, we can do this and still not violate any of our properties, resulting in a valid red-black tree. The same concept behind red-black tree insertions applies for deletions. Removing a node from a red-black tree makes use of the BST deletion procedure and then restores the red-black tree properties in order log n time. The total running time for a deletion process takes order log n time, which meets the complexity requirements for the primitive operations. We will now show the proof of guaranteed height for the worst case time complexity of red-black trees. We start by defining a subtree rooted at node x that has at least two raised to the black height of x minus one nodes. Suppose that X's subtree has only black nodes. For example, in this tree, we have a black height of 3 and 7 total nodes. To check our theory above, we substitute 3 for the black height and get 2 to the third minus 1, which simplifies to 8 minus 1, which we know is 7, so our thesis checks out. Now we define the height of the tree to be equal to h. We know from properties of a red-black tree that the black height of the root will be greater than or equal to the height divided by 2. By property 3, we know that there cannot be two reds in a row. Therefore, every red node must have black children. Because of our property written above, the path will have at least h over 2 black nodes. The height h of a red-black tree is equal to O of log n. Although we told you this, here is the final proof. Set n, the height of the tree, greater than or equal to 2 raised by the black height of x minus 1. We know that the black height of x is equal to the height divided by 2, so we sub this in, and we get n is greater than or equal to 2 raised to the h divided by 2 minus 1. Now we will take the log of both sides and add 1 to cancel on the right side, and add it to the left side. We know that the log base 2 of 2 will cancel, so we are left with the log of n plus 1 is greater than or equal to the height divided by 2. We now need to get h by itself, so we multiply 2 to cancel the fraction and switch the inequality, giving us h is less than or equal to 2 times log base 2 of n plus 1. As with all asymptotic analysis, the constants are negligible, so we cross them out. The final result of the height of a red-black tree is less than or equal to O of log n, proving that in the worst case, the height has an upper bound of O log n. What is the advantage of red-black trees over other balanced binary trees? Operations such as inserting, deleting, and finding values usually have a worst case time proportional to the height of the tree. Red black trees offer worst case guarantees for insertion, deletion, and searching. Unlike binary trees, the theoretical upper bound on the height allows red-black trees to be efficient in the worst case. 
Not only does this make them valuable in time-sensitive applications, such as real-time constraints, but it makes them valuable building blocks in other data structures which provide worst-case guarantees. For example, many data structures used in computational geometry can be based on red-black trees. There are, however, disadvantages to black tree, red black trees as well. Because they are based off of binary trees, red black trees can only have two children. This makes some cases of insertion and deletion more complicated, as we saw above, because they need to make sure that nothing breaks the invariant rules and still remain a balanced binary tree at the same time. Overall, red, bla red black trees are very efficient and guarantee a worst case time complexity of O log n, a unique and very fast characteristic compared to other algorithms. Although they can be difficult to maintain, their insertion time complexity is still O log n, making them ideal for real time applications. We hope you learned a lot about red black trees. Good luck on the quiz!